Washington, uh, Congresswoman Del Bene, who is a co-author with me on the, the LEADS Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you, Mr. Bitkower, for being with us today. Um, the DOJ argued in the Microsoft Ireland case that congressional inaction with respect to updating the Electronic Communications Privacy Act is evidence of legislative intent and that Congress generally thinks the law is fine, um, that the courts should feel free to apply it to all the unique situations that arise given the way technology works today, um, including international data storage. Now, uh, as was mentioned by m my colleague from Texas moments ago, are you aware that this committee has held hearings and announced plans to mark up the Email Privacy Act and that there are over 300 co-sponsors on that b very basic reform bill waiting for this committee to take it up and over 100 on the LEADS Act that addresses the international question. I am aware of those facts, yes. Um, so you've indicated that DOJ's position is that in all cases, the Electronic Communications Privacy Act as written reaches data overseas. So where it's stored doesn't matter. Uh, with respect to the government's ability to compel a provider to disclose information, it does not matter where the provider chooses to store that information, that's correct. Now, um, you know, Congress is looking at a number of ways to update Electronic Communications Privacy Act to account for the global nature um, of cloud computing um, and the needs of law enforcement to access critical evidence. But some of the threshold questions that we've discussed include the citizenship of the account holder, the location of the data, or the headquarters of the company holding the data. Would you say that the DOJ's position is that ECPA, as written, already addresses questions about how to handle data stored abroad, and that all of these questions are essentially superfluous to, to, and we shouldn't be asking them? Uh, so I think ECPA today currently does not make distinctions that restrict the government's ability to investigate based on the nationality of the account holder, and it does not make distinctions about the DOJ's ability to investigate based on where the data is stored. We think that's a wise course to continue with because there are many investigations where we need to take action where the individual may be abroad, the individual may not be an American. So we obviously we are concerned with legislation that would unilaterally strip our authority to investigate in those cases. So if we follow the model that says it's based on a, a company, um, then, and I think this was mentioned earlier as well, China could make subsidiaries of Chinese companies in the U.S. turn over whatever information it wants. Is that a desirable outcome? Uh, that is certainly not a desirable outcome, and that's in fact why we are looking for a creative way forward that would address conflicts of laws in targeted ways that lower those conflicts in cases where we have legitimate requests from companies that respect countries that respect rights, uh, but we can pick and choose which country to make a deal with. So many of us, many of us would agree, though, that the the MLAT system is in need of modernization to function officially in a digital age. Um, could you share with the committee how many times an MLAT has been used to obtain data stored overseas versus a warrant stored under the Stored Communications Act? So it's, it's difficult to answer that question because for the most part, if you're talking about the context of the SCA, the government is not aware where the data is stored. So if a company complies with an SCA warrant, we won't know one way or the other where the company got that data from Seattle, San Francisco, or Ireland. Uh, so I can't give you an answer to that question. Uh, I can only give answers based on the information we've received from companies when we serve that process on them. But can you give us your best estimation of that answer then? So this may not be a, a scientific answer, have? but uh, uh, to our knowledge, uh, in the history of serving SCA warrants on U.S. providers, uh, we have never been told that they cannot comply because of the conflict of law. Um, it's my understanding that before the Microsoft Ireland case, standard practice in these circumstances was to use the MLAT process. So if the MLAT process is broken, it's, you know, I would urge the DOJ to start working with Congress on reforms um, ran, ran, rather than coming up with new legal theories that apparently um, it, you've relied on in the past to get there. And I really would love to get more information on the difference of these numbers if you can provide those to us. So we'd be happy to work with you on that. Uh, I guess the one, the one area where I would, um, I think it's important to, to clarify is that there was no change in DOJ policy for, uh, or in the law for, for upwards of three decades. It's been the clear law of the United States that lawful process served on an American company can require that company to bring data back from abroad. We have never heard from an SCA provider, to my knowledge, that they cannot comply with one of those warrants because of the conflict of law. 
if we were ever told so in a given situation, we would take that very seriously. We would work with the provider and endeavor to see what that conflict of law is. Uh, if there is a true conflict, we'd try to see if there are ways around that. That situation has not actually occurred yet, including in the Microsoft Ireland case, where, as I said before, Microsoft has not alleged any conflict of law. In fact, Microsoft submitted a declaration on behalf of itself, and Ireland submitted a declaration on behalf of itself, and neither one have alleged a conflict of law in that situation. So we take very seriously conflicts of laws. We do it across a variety of investigative contexts. Nearly every one of our financial investigations involving banks and the like involve claims of conflicts of laws. We work through those processes. If we do proceed to a compulsion action in court, the court is then empowered to balance important considerations, including comedy, including the value to the investigation, including the burden that might be faced in the company. And we take all of those very seriously. Our concern is with legislation that in every single case, if there was a conflict, would resolve that conflict against law enforcement and in favor of the foreign country. Um, my time's expired. I think we need laws so that work the way the world works today, and that's going to be critical for us all to follow up on. Um, thank you. I yield back. Thank you. I know.